Hey, hi everyone, this is Vivek and welcome to yet another episode of Code Forces Weekly where we talk about good Code Forces problems from last recent contests and we pick out the interesting learnings that we can learn from those problems. So for today, we have this infinite set problem from Code Forces 772 Diff 2 round. And this particular problem is a very beautiful problem built on top of like decomposing the statement and how to handle different kind of multiple inputs in it. So let's have a look at what the problem says. Also, we have this tradition of like noting down different learnings from the video into the comments. So make sure that you, that you do them. I don't see people doing them now, but make sure that you do that because it's going to help you to learn and retain them for a very long time. Also, do make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so, because these kind of content is actually going to help you to improve a lot more in CP if you want to do that in a in the future. Right. So make sure you do, that you do that. Let's continue with the problem. So we have this set of uh, n numbers which are distinct and we have a set s that we are creating that we can take any x equal to a of i right we can take any a of i and then we can keep on multiplying it with 2 2y plus 1 or we can make 4y from a particular number so for any number present in x you can obviously start with any one of the a of i so all of them are in the set and then with any number y in the set we can multiply it with 2 and add 1 to it and this number also belongs to set and then 4y also gets added to the set. So these two kind of numbers can get added to the set and with 1 and 2 we can generate this. You can see that 6 cannot be created in this and there are some numbers which we cannot create like 10 cannot be created and so on. But these are the 10 smallest number that we can create. So we need to find the number of elements in S that are strictly less than 2 to the power p or we need to find the number of elements that we can create which are, which are valued less than 2 to the power p. And since this, is, this number is very large we need to print it 10 to the power 9 plus 7, right? Okay, so that's a really nice problem. How do we go about doing and solving this particular problem? And then n and p's are very large because it's up to the power 5, so we have to solve it in quite an optimal complexity. And a of i is up to the power 9. Let's see how we can do this. The first thing that we have, two important observations from the problem is, we need to find the numbers that are strictly less than 2 to the power p, number 1, which hints towards something. What? We're going to look into that. Second is this set of operations 2y plus 1 and 4y. How we going to decompose this operation, right? Let's move into the setup. So let's say you're given some number x, right? And we can do, we can convert and add this, num this number into the set 2x plus 1. And we can also add this number 4x into the set, right? And then again, from those numbers, we can repeatedly do this particular operation multiple number of times and generate the whole set. Now, from this particular thing, we can say that... These are a fixed set of numbers that will be generated from the original set. Number two, that we need to find the number of numbers which are less than or equal to 2 to the power p, less than, strictly less than 2 to the power p. What that says is we have to somehow process the whole problem in binary numbers. Why? Because it's given in the problem as a big hint that 2 to the power p is the maximum limit. So it's like you have to generate numbers which have p bits, at most p bits in it, right? p significant bits in it. That's the maximum possibility. We need to find the ways to fill this particular thing such that it starts with one of the numbers that is given and then we can generate these things. Now, since we are thinking about this particular problem in bit sense, right? How do we model these operations? So 2x plus 1 is nothing like, let's say there is this number 1011, something like this. If you do this operation, you kind of shift this all towards this side and then add a 1 at the end, right? So it's like this can be uh, said as append 1. What is 4x? It's like if you have 1011, it's like you shift it this side and then add two zeros because you multiply it with 4, right? We know that it's like bit shift by 2. This is like bit shift by 1 plus 1 or or 1, something like this, x, right? This is how you can represent them in bit manipulation. So these are the two things that we can do that append a 1 at the end or append two zeros at the end, right? Append two zeros. Okay, so these are the two things that we can do for a number and we are given a bunch of numbers initially, let's say some one and in the problem it was given one and two, right? So we are given one this. So from this we can generate, we can, you can see that from one we can generate one zero zero and then we can generate one one and then from this we can generate one one zero zero uh, and then from this one we can, so which is basically 12, from this we can generate uh, one 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 which is seven, from this we can generate one 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 zero 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 but it exceeds the limit of p that was given the problem uh this we can generate in all different ways like one zero zero one which is nothing but exactly equal to nine right and from this side also we can this, this is nothing but three uh so two from two we can generate one zero one which is five you, you can generate one zero zero which is eight right 
and so you can see that one got generated two is already there three got generated and five got generated but we did not had four in the whole process right so that is something which we cannot generate and you can see that samples it doesn't really contain four so that is something which is given to us oh uh, sorry four is also generated right five is generated six is not generated right six is one zero one one zero which is possible right which is which is true because we cannot generate one zero one one zero why because we had one and one zero so even with one we can append two zeros or with one one we can append a one or double zero so one one zero can never be generated right so that's how these numbers are getting generated so now we have a fixed kind of an operation that one and zero zero can be appended and we have to find numbers which are of fixed p length at max p length sorry not fixed at max p length of significant bits now how to process this in future let's move into how do we actually hold like handle these kind of things that append one append zero zero and then we need to find number of strings of strings of length less than equal to x this is what we are kind of solving right now right i mean we have to find the number of strings of less than equal to x length and uh, we need to append the we can possibly append these two things at the end and let's say we start with some empty string let's say we can generate anything at the start right we can we are like empty we can put in anything how do we solve this problem first of all the way to go about these problems is standard is a standard problem to be precise and if we try to solve this problem with any other method for the given constraint, it would not work. The way we do this kind of problem is DP because whenever you can append something at the back, it's generally a DP formulation. So what we do is we have a string. We can either go into one and then solve the rest of the problems for this less than x length, or we can have one zero zero appended and then we can solve the rest of the problem over here. Now note that we will never have this starting as empty one. We will always have either one or some significant number given to us, right? The number that is given to us in the input is significant, like is either one greater than or equal to one. So it will never be like a position where you will have zero zero in the front. So let's assume that we have one zero something like this in the front, right? Something like this, and then you append two zeros on top of it, right? So these kind of things would be generated. So it's like you have to fill in these particular portion. And you have less than equal to x minus one length left. You can append a one over here. Then you would be left with x minus two length, right? Less than equal to x minus two length. And then you can append zero zero over here. And then you have to find the number of string less than equal to x minus three length, right? And then the other thing is you can stop over here, and then uh, you would get this one string. So these are the possibilities that you can do. So we can write a DP for that particular instance, or you can also write it at exactly equal to x minus two length as well. There are multiple ways to write this DP. So the thing that we are trying to do is DP of some x will mean number of strings that can be generated, right? Because it's just like appending something at the end generated of length less than equal to x, right? This is something that we can write as a DP. So what we'll do for this is we will simply write DP of x as equal to either we can stop over here whatever we have generated is the number so one plus we can generate something by appending one dp of because it's less than equal to so you can stop at this particular place as well or you will have at least one number being appended at the end so it's x minus one plus you this is basically append this is for the transition append one plus dp of x minus two which is mostly like append zero zero Right, so these are the two two uh, recurrence that we write, and then DP of x will give you this particular thing. So it's a simple recurrence which you can pre-build in an array if you want, and then we can solve this particular problem in O of like the maximum length that we need is p. P was up to ten to the power five, so we can pre-compute this DP in order ten to the power five. So that's one part of the problem that how do you count the number of strings that we can generate, right? But the main problem doesn't really had this particular setup that you can start with one and generate everything. It was like there was bunch of numbers and then we have to solve this particular problem. How do you handle that? That's also a very very interesting idea. Okay, so let's have a look at that. If you have one one zero one zero zero, right? Something like this. Okay, and let's say there is also a number one one zero one, right? So th this let's say this was a one and this was a two. Now, from a two, you can either append a one 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 zero one one, or you can also append two zeros and get one one zero one zero zero, which is same as a one, right? Now, note that every number that you can generate going from a one, you can also generate from a two, right? I mean, if you can append two zeros and get a one, you can all you can always generate every number that is possible from a one, also from a two, right? 
so the way we will handle this is we will see that for any particular a of i right is there any a of j that can generate this a of i and if it can generate then we will say that okay this a of i is insignificant because if a of j can generate a of i it's essentially saying that a of j can generate everything that a of i will generate so there is no pointing double counting it all those numbers and then don't count a of i altogether because a of j will anyways count them right so we will see that what are the numbers that will be gen that can be generated from some other number in the set altogether so we have we are given n numbers right and we have to find out the numbers that we can generate that can be generated from other numbers that are present in the set how to check that very efficiently right so let's ha let's have a look at that let's say we are given this number uh, 110100 right so what all numbers can gen generate this particular number any number is like any number we are doing this operation 2x plus 1 or 4x right which is like appending two zeros or appending a single one so the numbers that this can come from i mean 110100 the only thing that could generate this from the last step would have been appending two zeros right so that would be the number 1101 the anything that could generate this is only the append one operation right and it's nothing but 110 and note that you cannot generate this number anywhere by any operation altogether right so this could be the lineage by which this number might get generated and for a particular number since we are decreasing a particular bit in every step the number of numbers in this lineage that is there can only be order log of a of i right this is the number of numbers that can be there in this lineage now the, let's say this is a of i right this number is significant if neither of these numbers are already present in the set right there is this initial set of numbers n numbers that is given to us if neither of these numbers are present in the set then this number is significant that is what we essentially use for this particular problem so we can do, go ahead and loop on every every number so we will loop on every number o of n right multiplied by for every number we will go through all of its back lineage numbers like all the numbers that are present behind like previous to that and we can simply check whether that was present like is that present in the array or not right this is something we can very easily do if we like maybe use something like try if, i mean if required but it's not really required for this problem you can simply use a map if the, if required i mean you can use any structure i mean it's not that complicated but for this number you can simply check you can like if it is divisible by 4 then divide by 4 if it is if it if it has if it's an odd then subtract 1 and then divide by 2 right so these are things that can generate the lineage and then you can check if any, if any one of them is present so the number of numbers that you will have to check is log of a of i and we can check that in o of uh, log n maybe like using a map that's perfectly fine i mean this will be sufficient enough for this particular problem it's sort of odd log, log of n square and you can also do some like quick checkings as well that you can kind of start like every number will at least decrease by uh you, you can actually do this with some more data structures but not really required for this problem this is this should be sufficient enough for this problem and th this way you can check easily that what are the numbers that are significant and what are not so for this like if these two numbers are present then this will not be a significant because a of this is a of 2 so a of 1 is insignificant because a of 2 is present so from this we can get a set of numbers let's say 100 zero, zero, and then one one zero and then one one zero one right and then let's say this was given one zero zero one zero something like this and then one zero zero one zero zero right now you can check quickly that actually this number can be reduced into this number by removing a one so this is insignificant this number can be reduced into um, this number because we have we can remove these two zeros we can remove this one and then it becomes same so this is insignificant this number cannot be reduced anymore because it is not divisible by four neither it's odd so this cannot be reduced this cannot be reduced as well this cannot be reduced as well so these are the three numbers that are significant and now note that no matter what you do after them right no matter what you do after them they are all going to generate different kind of numbers less than equal to p length right i mean they are all going to generate different kind of numbers because the prefix itself is different the numbers at the start itself differ from each other so all of the numbers that are generated are different so if you want to find the number of numbers that are generated less than equal to p length what we can simply do is after 100 we have to we can add less than equal to p minus 3 numbers because there are 3 bits in this number what is the number of numbers that you can generate simply dp of p minus 3 plus the number of numbers that are generated by this dp of p minus 3 plus the number of numbers that are generated by this plus dp of p minus 5 right and if you just simply add these for the significant numbers you will get the total number of numbers that can be generated and this you can simply do by looping through all the significant numbers and then just computing the number of bits and adding up the pre-computed dp that we have calculated earlier 
So that's the whole idea for this particular problem. So if we, so these were all the observations that you need. Next, if we try to quickly formulate this up, which we do for every problem, if you have not checked the way we solve problems, just check out that particular video I've added in the I button. But if you want to formulate this particular problem in a way, this way that first of all, we need to compute that DP array, right? DP of I is equal to one plus DP of I minus one plus DP of I minus two, right? This is basically counting the number of numbers less than equal to I length that can be generated using that two operations, right? And then like what we do is we keep a set of numbers like set of X, A of I's. And then what we will do is we will reduce significant, reduce numbers. I mean, uh, you will keep the significant numbers over here and then use and then reduce them. The way we will do that is for every number, you will just simply check that it, can it be reduced? If into a number that is already added, you can go from small to large. And then if it is already present in the significant, only in the significant set, then check it, right? And then for every number, you can go into the linear chain and check if it is already present in the significant ones. If it is, then remove the current one. And then you, if not, then add this new number into the set. And then what, what you can finally do is for every number that is significant for all significant uh, plus equals to dp of length p minus length of that uh, number a of i that is significant okay that is something you can add and that will give you the total answer so that would be the main formulation then you can go ahead and code this particular problem quickly and then you would get an ac for this problem so definitely code this problem it's a very good exercise and it's like combination of maths dp a bit of reduction of bits and all of these topics so it's a very good technique to keep in mind mind uh, the main thing that you should learn is how do you decompose these two to less than equal to the power p into bits size how do you significant like uh, simply see this uh, problem as a bit problem where you have to reduce the operations into bit manipulation work work and and into transitions of DP. And the third thing that you can kind of keep in mind is like, how do you see this significant and insignificant check using this log n steps where you go into the linear chain on how this can be generated because there is a unique way, right? So these were the key observations, but I've just kind of quickly summarized them. Make sure that you write them down below. So that whatever you have learned, because it's important that you write them down to encode it in your mind, and then you'd be able to use it in any problem that you see in the future contest. Believe me, it seems very silly that why should I comment it up? But it does work. I have seen people actually improving using this particular technique. So that's all for this particular video. Do like and subscribe if you have not done so, because that helps me to create more such content i will keep up putting more if, if you guys support me for this one and that's all for today's video see you in the next week bye, -bye.